So the question is, are ventilators for COVID-19 actually causing more harm than good? We're going to talk about that today. Now, a very interesting report came out talking about ventilators. A ventilator is a machine that breathes for you. It uses forced air and oxygen. And check this out. New York officials have said that at least 80% of COVID-19 patients who were on ventilators in the city died. As someone becomes critically ill and they end up in intensive care and they're put on this ventilator, they also sedate them. So because the COVID-19 virus targets the lungs, it becomes more and more difficult to breathe. So the patient is gasping for oxygen. So it makes logical sense that they would put you on a breathing machine, a ventilator, to help you get air, right? Well, the problem is, in severe cases, the lung is so fragile, adding more pressure to the lung can create more damage to the lung. So if you haven't seen this before, I want to show you right now a very interesting report from a doctor in New York. Check this out. This is Dr. Cameron Kyle Seidel, ER and critical care doctor from New York City. Nine days ago, I opened an intensive care unit to care for the sickest COVID positive patients in this city. In these nine days, I have seen things I have never seen before. In treating these patients, I have witnessed medical phenomenon that just don't make sense in the context of treating a disease that is supposed to be a viral pneumonia. Nine days ago, I presumed I was opening an intensive care unit to treat patients with a virus causing a pneumonia that was ravaging lungs across the world, starting out as something mild, a uh, cough, a sore throat, and progressively increasing in severity until ultimately ending in something called acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. This is the paradigm that every hospital in the country is working under. This is the disease, ARDS, that every hospital is preparing to treat. And this is the disease, ARDS, for which in the next two to six weeks, 100,000 Americans might be put on a ventilator. And yet, everything I've seen in the last nine days, all the things that just don't make sense, the patients I'm seeing in front of me, the lungs I'm trying to improve, have led me to believe that COVID-19 is not this disease and that we are operating under a medical paradigm that is untrue. In short, I believe we are treating the wrong disease, and I fear that this misguided treatment will lead to a tremendous amount of harm to a great number of people in a very short time. As New York City appears to be about 10 days ahead of the country, I feel compelled to get this information out. COVID-19 lung disease, as far as I can see, is not a pneumonia and should not be treated as one. Rather, it appears as if some kind of viral, it appears as some kind of viral induced disease, most resembling high altitude sickness. It is as if tens of thousands of my fellow New Yorkers are on a plane at 30,000 feet and the cabin pressure is slowly being let out. These patients are slowly being starved of oxygen. I have seen patients dependent on oxygen, take off their oxygen and quickly progress through a state of anxiety and emotional distress and eventually get blue in the face. And while they look like patients absolutely on the brink of death, they do not look like patients dying of pneumonia. I have never been a mountain climber, and I do not know the conditions at base camp below the highest peaks in the world, uh, but I suspect that the patients I'm seeing in front of me uh, look most like as if a person was dropped off on the top of Mount Everest without time to acclimate. Uh, I don't know the final answer of this disease, but I'm quite sure that a ventilator is not it. Uh, that is not to say that we don't need ventilators. We absolutely need them. Uh, they are the only way at this time that we are able to give a little more oxygen to patients who need it. Uh, but when we treat people with ARDS, uh, we typically use ventilators uh, to treat what's called respiratory failure. Uh, that is, uh, we use the ventilator to do the work that the patient's muscles can no longer do because they're too tired to do it. So this is a very interesting observation because apparently this condition is not like pneumonia or ARDS, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome, it's more like a high altitude sickness where the person just is losing oxygen. And what they find when they do a CAT scan of the lungs is something called a ground glass-like appearance of the lungs, that it basically looks like ground glass as the patient is literally starving of oxygen. And basically he said the problem is the pressure that these ventilators are giving are just way too high. And his message and his recommendation, which I hope gets disseminated through the medical community, you need to adjust the pressure. You need to turn the pressure down 
and increase the oxygen. Because in these advanced cases, the lungs are very, very fragile. And the normal saturation of oxygen should be between 95 to 100%. In these cases, it is way low, like 50, 20, and even lower than that. So now the question is, what is happening in this condition that's affecting the lungs? Let's take a look. Now, there's some really interesting data that came up recently that COVID-19, the coronavirus, attacks hemoglobin, okay? And this is what's happening. The red blood cell that carries oxygen in the form of hemoglobin, which is the protein that attaches to iron, if you lose the iron in the heme, you're not gonna be able to carry oxygen. The patient is gonna literally starve of oxygen. And the other problem is the free iron now starts leaking out through the body, goes into the lung, and creates a severe reaction, an oxidation reaction, which leads to massive free radicals, scar tissue, and definitely inflammation. Free iron in the body is very, very toxic and dangerous. This is one of the things that's creating the ground glass-like appearance in the lungs. And of course, if the blood cells can no longer hold oxygen and transport it, then you're basically gonna suffocate. And this occurs in the later stages of the infection. We have a drop in oxygen and a high level of CO2 because the CO2 can't release and we create a real bad situation. So when you're put on the ventilator, that's putting all this forced air into a lung that's already damaged, you're gonna create more damage. And this is why when you look at the blood test for people with COVID-19, you see high ferritin. Ferritin is a storage mechanism for iron. So when the heme loses the iron, the body compensates and makes a lot more ferritin. So one of the things that hopefully is gonna happen more and more is the doctors are still gonna use ventilators, but turning down the pressure, raising up the oxygen. Now, there's something equally as interesting about hydroxychloroquine. Look in the news, everyone's talking about how this drug, which by the way is a drug for malaria that's repurposed, it acts to allow zinc to go into the cells and disrupt the replication of this virus, okay? So this is kind of what everyone is talking about right now, but hydroxychloroquine does several other things, okay? It blocks the hemoglobin catabolism. Now, what does that mean? Well, when you actually take hemoglobin, and turn it into heme and iron, this is called catabolism, which basically is a breakdown of certain things. Okay, so it's gonna actually help not just kill this virus, but it also can help prevent this thing from occurring so you get less damage in the lung. Now there's another function of chloroquine. It will suppress something called the innate immune system. So there's two parts of the immune system. One part of the immune system is called the innate, and that system, uh, you're born with it. There's no training involved. These white blood cells know what to do, and they're the first line of defense, okay? Then you have another system over here called the adaptive or acquired, which takes some time because they have to be exposed to a microbe, develop a memory using antibodies, and it actually, both of these systems work back and forth. Now, when you have what's called a cytokine storm, so you have a massive amount of uh, inflammation going on in the lungs because of these certain cytokines which are inflammatory. So there's a tremendous amount of collateral damage that can occur from this immune reaction. And it's mainly performed by the innate immune system because the adaptive immune system over here is broken and it can't buffer this overreacting hypersensitive immune system. But hydroxychloroquine actually can inhibit and suppress that innate immune system to calm down the inflammation. So that's another benefit of this medication. Now think about it, this drug has been used for roughly 70 years um, for malaria and lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Now what's so unique about malaria? Well, that's involving a parasite. And guess what? The parasite is eating hemoglobin for its fuel, for its food, which is interesting. So this drug is gonna kill off the parasite as well as help preserve this breakdown right here. And the reason why it's used for lupus and rheumatoid arthritis 
is because both of these are inflammatory conditions. And the less free iron that you have, the less oxidation, the less inflammation, plus you are getting a reduction of inflammation because it's, it's suppressing the innate part of the immune system. So as you can see, the benefits of this drug go far beyond just the killing of the virus. Now, the last thing I wanna tell you, which is very, very important, is that anyone with an infection in general, not to mention this infection, not to mention lung damage, is going to be very depleted of zinc. So these white blood cells are saturated with zinc. They need zinc in almost every level of the immune system. So it's my opinion that this is not gonna work as well unless you use zinc, because zinc is needed to penetrate the cell. So right now, the doctors that are successfully using this, these protocols are using hydroxychloroquine, uh, z pack which is an antibiotic, and they're using zinc with it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you haven't seen my video on boosting the immune system, I'll put it right here.